Welcome to Homeschool Nolan, here to help you navigate learning in the digital age. Should I still learn how to code? Should my kids learn how to code? I ask this question because as someone who works in tech, I kept hearing over the previous decade how important it is to learn how to code in the digital age. In my own Silicon Valley suburb, I noticed there are a lot of coding schools geared towards kids in our local strip malls. But if you follow the news, you may have noticed that a lot of tech companies have been announcing layoffs lately, and a lot of the people being let go are coders and software engineers. Which leads to the question, are these layoffs just a temporary phenomenon? Or are many of these jobs going to be gone forever? Well, as someone who's been working in tech over the past 20 plus years, I've noticed two important trends that lead me to believe that many of these jobs are never coming back. But before I get into these trends, let me first quickly review why software engineering jobs seem plentiful up until this year. The first was the COVID-19 related lockdowns. For about a year, people were staying at home and they were heavily dependent on technology for just about everything. People depended on technology to learn, to work, to communicate, and to shop. This caused a temporary boom in the tech industry. The second reason software engineering jobs seem plentiful had to do with near zero interest rates. Let me explain. After the last Great Recession of 2009, the US Federal Reserve responded by a policy known as quantitative easing, whereby they bought up financial securities with the goal of reducing interest rates to stimulate the economy. This lowering of interest rates, rates caused a boom in the stock market and created plenty of cheap money which investors poured into the tech industry and tech startups which in turn created lots of good paying jobs. So in short, low interest rates combined with people staying at home created a boom in the tech industry that is now coming to an end. With that, there are two long-term trends that lead me to believe that many of the software engineering jobs being eliminated today are never coming back. The first is global competition. You see, when I first got my first programming job way back in the 90s, it was the dawn of the digital age. Just about every company, big or small, needed a website and some software to help run their business. And they needed a software engineer. They needed to find someone local who could come into the office every day and work. Job opportunities for programmers in just about any decent sized city or town were plentiful. But today, thanks to high speed internet, along with the normalization of working from home, companies today now have an entire world of programmers to choose from. In addition to hiring locally, companies can hire software engineers from India, Vietnam, Poland, and just about anywhere in the world that has high-speed internet. I bet a lot of workers who insisted, insisted on being allowed to work from home after it was safe to return to the office didn't realize that they might have been undermining their own job security. Now, as, as an American, I've definitely noticed that a lot of companies today now have their software engineering teams based outside of the United States. And it isn't just American companies that are doing this. I have a friend in Australia who owns his own internet startup. He tells me he greatly values people with college degrees, yet he himself won't hire college educated software engineers in his own country. He instead prefers to hire them in Vietnam where they work just as hard, if not harder, and for less pay. It's because of employers like him all around the world that high paying software engineering jobs will only become increasingly harder to find in the years ahead. A second trend I see working against the software engineering job market is what I call better and better software development tools. 20 years ago, if a company needed to design a website, they usually needed to hire someone who was good at HTML, JavaScript, Linux, and MySQL. But today, there are a lot of online platforms and tools that make it much easier, 
so much easier that anyone willing to sit through an online tutorial can learn to build their own professional looking website. When I first started programming in college, the languages Java and Python hadn't even been invented yet, and we had to learn coding through lower level, more difficult languages such as C. But today, there are so many different high level languages out there complete with software libraries that make the job of building applications much easier. There's even a trend today called low code and no code where you can vis use visually intuitive tools to build business applications with little or no coding at all. Now don't get me wrong, knowing how to use all these libraries and tools still takes skill, but the barrier to entry is now lower than it was for programmers who, who started out in the 80s and 90s who had to code much of their own tools from scratch. So back to the question, should I still learn how to code given these trends? Well, if you're interested in coding mostly because you think it's still a relatively easy path to a high paying job, then my answer is no, you probably shouldn't bother. The days when you can learn coding by reading books and taking online courses and then get paid a lot are coming to an end. There's simply too much global competition for these jobs and companies no longer have to pay top dollar to build the most common types of software applications. However, if you're a parent or a student, I do think there is still great value for young people to learn how to code. Just as I think there's value in learning how to say play a musical instrument or playing a sport. Coding is a discipline that teaches you how to solve problems logically and efficiently. It's also an outlet to be creative. So even if you don't end up becoming a software engineer when you grow up, having a background in coding will give you an appreciation of how our digital world works and help you get valuable training in solving problems. By the way, if you're looking for an online platform to help you learn computer science and coding, check out study.com. Study.com has over 8,300 engaging educational videos, including courses in computer science and programming. I use it with my son, and we find it a great way to support his homeschooling as well as my own supplemental learning. Use the coupon code HOMESCHOOLNOLAN and get 30% off the first three months. Check out study.com today. As long as there are computers in this world, there will always be a need for talented software engineers. And the best ones out there will always be able to get paid very well. But if you're not one of the best, keep in mind that competition for these jobs will become increasingly fierce. Being a successful software engineer takes both talent and hard work. That said, if you're a young person who is pretty good at math and enjoys problem solving, you may want to consider a career in software engineering. And I hope this video, no matter your stage in life, has helped you navigate whether learning how to code is the right path for you. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And don't forget to click subscribe for more videos like this one. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.